all time. Let's do this, y'all. This is going on the YouTube. Hey, look. Let's say jump on the kite. Jump on the kite. Uh, y'all know we lit over there. So let's do this. So let's jump into this. Pause. Pause. Interrogation rooms hold some of the most horrifying, saddening, and life-changing moments in history. So here are some of the craziest interrogation moments of all time. Starting out with Thomas Robinson, a 27-year-old facing life in prison after shooting a 17-year-old boy. But Thomas wasn't going down easily. In fact, he was determined to make the cops' lives as difficult as he could in the most dangerous ways imaginable. As the policeman moves to handcuff... He had to be going down for some body or something. He killed a 17-year-old. Oh, killed a, oh, yeah. So, yeah, when you... Yeah, bro. When you, yeah. Yeah, bro. You mad. Him, Thomas leans over and glances at the holster on the cop's waist, where he gets an idea that could end in death for him and the officer. I'm good. Get it. Thomas made a leap for the cop's gun, but due to safety features built into the holster, he wasn't able to get it out. After a short struggle, two more cops entered the room with tasers to subdue him, and he was eventually restrained without... Oh, you know he caught that elbow for that. On top of that, he definitely got the elbow. Life. It's over. <laughs> for the issue. This obviously just looks like a case where the suspect wanted to escape and was prepared to do so by any means necessary. But... Take another listen to what he's saying as he's fighting with the cops. If he was really trying to escape, it's unlikely he'd be repeating the words kill me from the get-go. Instead, it's possible that Thomas was so terrified of his sentence and the position he was in that he made the radical move to scare the officers in hopes that they'd shoot him and spare him from what's to come. Bringing a firearm into an interrogation room is an incredibly what? foolish idea, and the majority of How the fuck he get the stick in there? How? 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 Both that motherfucking is crazy. Police departments forbid it for the safety of the detectives. But it seems this Las Vegas police department also forgot about that rule and come incredibly close to seeing the consequences. This man convicted of killing a two-year-old boy actually managed to... Re Are you fucking coward? This man convicted of killing a two-year-old boy actually managed to retrieve the gun from the detective's holster, resulting in a mad scramble to get it back off him. It took three separate officers and multiple punches to the head to reclaim the firearm. Somehow, nobody was hurt, but Ryan Waller wasn't so lucky, as his story ends in a truly horrifying way after he was brought in for interrogation with a bullet still stuck in his head. You told me they shot you with a revolver in your eye. Yes. Is it a BB gun? No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a revolver. They shot you in the eye. You wouldn't be talking to me right now. It was most likely you'd be dead. But little did police officers know, he was actually telling the truth. As while 18-year-old Ryan was being mocked by detectives, he was suffering from a gunshot to the head and experiencing a brain bleed that could end his life at any moment. You're not going back to bed. On the 23rd of December 2006, two men broke into Ryan Waller's house looking for revenge for a past argument. Ryan heard the noise at the door, but when he went to investigate, a hand reached inside and shot him twice in the eye. The two men, Richie and Larry Carver, then entered his house and shot Ryan's girlfriend, Heather, killing her instantly. By some miracle, 18-year-old Ryan survived and was able to talk to police when they arrived hours later. Given he'd just been shot 
in the head. He told them he had no idea what happened, but instead of being taken straight to the hospital, he was taken to the police station and interrogated for the longest hour of his life. Before the interview started, Ryan was left in the room alone. He squirmed in pain for 20 minutes straight, and worse yet, he was handcuffed to the desk and unable to scream for help. Him, he got shot! Mm. Mm. Ryan is obviously not okay, but the detectives begin the interrogation anyway. You know why you're down here, Ryan? Nick, I was shot. I have no idea why you're down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay. So I'm going to read you something to make sure you understand your rights. Okay. And you have your right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you in a court of law. What's the um, highest grade you went through school? I'm serious, bro. Uh, I just got just shot in the face, bro. Okay. You're not going to go home right now. What's the highest grade that you completed? B? <laughs> no. Not, not grade, as in letter grade. I'm asking, did you graduate high school? No. Did you not read and write, Ryan? Yeah. The way the detective is talking to Ryan implies that he knows something is wrong. He's raising his voice slightly, slowing down, and talking in very simplified language just as you would a child. Yet even with the massive red mark around Ryan's face and the dazed responses he's giving, the detective still decides that nothing is wrong and continues questioning him. Do you have a girlfriend? Mm. Mm -mm. No? You met you know a girl named Heather? Um, mm, the one that lives there? Or no? I guess, I don't know. For her name's Heather, what's her last name? I don't know which name she's trying to use as her last one. She's trying to have a real last as her nickname, so I don't know. What nickname does she go by? She probably wants the last name Kaiman. Kaiman? How old is Heather? 16 or 17. What happened to your face? I don't know. You told the officer just a few minutes ago that someone hit you. Do you remember who hit you? I think it was Heather. Why would Heather hit you? It was an accident. I forgot why. What was an accident? Heather's last name? No. What was an accident? Heather hitting me. What happened to Your brain is fucking shriveling. Bro, he about to die right in that chair. You can fuck around and die right there. Heard it hit you in the eye like that. She just hit me on accident. She was giving Christina a head. She was what? She was having Christina with her hand or something. I don't know. Who's Christina? She's on the couch. Christina's on the couch? Ryan and Heather lived with another person whose name isn't public. There's a possibility that it's the Christina he's referring to here, but either way, nobody else was home at any point of the night of the attack. Ryan is clearly suffering traumatic brain injury, and it's astonishing that the detective isn't connecting the dots. Even if it was just blunt force like Ryan is telling him, he still should be checked out by a doctor given how he's acting. But of course, that's not how it happens. Instead, it somehow gets even more messed up. What happened last night? I don't know. You don't know? I really don't. I just want to go to sleep and go to sleep. Who was in the house when you went to sleep? Christina and Heather. Christina and Heather? Mm hmm And Christina was on the couch? Heather was. Heather was on the couch. You told me Christina was on the couch just a minute ago. I don't know, man. I really don't. I really don't. I just want to go and go to sleep, man. Ryan, you're not going to go anywhere. Do you know what happened in your house last night? Mm-mm. Yeah, what happened? I don't know what happened. You're all beat up. So tell me what happened. I don't know. I just want to go to sleep, man. There's a dead girl in your living room. She's dead? Yes. Heather? The girl on the couch is dead? I don't know. If she's on the couch, she's dead. Well, these people came over, reaching his dad, with shooting arrow and broken darts. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They had me and her with those. That's it. And Heather wasn't there. 
Yeah, Eric wasn't there. It was just me and Heather. And then what happened? So who are, they couldn't even lock nobody up. And this shit wouldn't be even credible for court. Like, all this shit he's saying, whoever did this is good. Because he done said 10, they came through with darts and arrows. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah you're mad, bro. You got shot, nigga. You talking about darts and arrows? Niggas with a, a, a lawyer would tear this up at court. If they try to charge a nigga over this, a nigga is tearing this shit up at court. I'd have been in the, look, I'd have been in the chair like this, chat. I'd have been there. Yeah, we out of here. We about to beat this nigga. This nigga's dusty. That nigga that died is dusty. You heard? The fuck is he talking about? Who's Eric? Who the fuck is Eric? When Christina Heather wasn't there, she got shot with you. Then she wasn't there. What are you talking about right now, homie? Yeah, bro. You better off dead, nigga. <laughs> let me chill. Let me chill. I can't post this on YouTube. I'm wildin'. Damn, I'm wildin', y'all. I'm wildin'. I'm wildin'. Damn. Yeah, me and her were close. That's it. Wow. And Heather wasn't there. And Eric wasn't there. Yeah. It was just me and Heather. And then what happened? And that's it. Richie and his dad tried to break in in the back. Is Richie and dad? His dad? Mm hmm. Who's Richie? I don't know. Well, you obviously know him. You know his name by He used to live there. Was he a roommate of yours? He used to be. They hit you? Yeah. Now it's Richie that hit you? Not Heather? No, Richie and his dad. Why? Because they're trying to get their stuff. I don't know why. Yeah, this case all fucked. And they had some kind of bone arrows? At this point, the cops should just stop interviewing him. Like, this shit is getting like... Yeah, this shit is getting stupid now. Like, now it's like... No, nah, you know why they gonna keep interviewing him now? Cause they gonna be like, listen, this nigga's dusted. Let's charge him with the murder. He don't know what's going on. He done told us ten stories. Yeah, you're under arrest for murder. Yeah, he's half retarded, bro. They each had two revolvers and they didn't lock in shells. Okay, you just said they had bow and arrows. Now they have revolvers. That's right. This nigga just said bow and arrows. Now you just said they have kind of bow and arrows. They each had two revolvers and they didn't lock in shells. Okay, you just said they have so been This nigga's like his shit is coming back and forth like he's forgetting and he's remembering. It's like it's going, this shit is fading in and out. This shit is fading. Arrows. Now they have revolvers? That's what I meant. They have revolvers. They have revolvers? Yes. And then what happened? And then they shot us with those. They shot both of you? Yeah. Where'd they shoot you at? They got shot in the eye. You got shot in the eye. I think so. With a revolver. I think. I don't know, man. I don't know. Then what happened? The I don't know. Yeah, that's what's going on. You don't know a lot. Ryan? I don't, man. I really don't. I'd like to see this detective try and articulate himself anywhere near as Ryan is in this situation. He's managed to recount the exact sequence of events as well as the perpetrator's names with the revolver bullet still in his brain. It does sound like an unbelievable story and that's probably why the cop is essentially laughing at him by now. But that still doesn't excuse any part of what's going on. He's obviously... I lie. When you lock a nigga up, don't you see a nigga face like you post all of him medical attention. I ain't gonna lie. Denied him that medical. I ain't gonna lie. You post and be like, yo, you need to see the medical anything. Because with my Vernon, if they fuck you up, they gonna bring you to the hospital. <laughs> they gonna bring you up. Yeah, your shit leaking, your shit naughty. Yeah, they ready. You want go medical? You want medical attention? Yes, sir. Get me out of these cells. Bring me to the hospital so I can tell somebody. Tell somebody something. <laughs> yo, go to somebody. Tell me I want to. You know me. The niggas got me. Make them niggas fuck me up. Take me to the hospital. Yeah, I go to the hospital. Oh. oh, just lie. Yo, my asthma fucking up. I need to go to the hospital. You need to the hospital easy. You just got out of finesse. But that still doesn't excuse any part of what's going on. He's obviously distressed, in pain. I don't even got asthma and needs to go to the hospital, but he's still more than half an hour away from any form of salvation. Ryan, why don't you tell me what really happened there? Because I don't believe... I really don't know, man. I really don't. I don't know. I can tell you anything, I swear. Well, I want you to tell me the truth. That's all I want. Richie and his dad came there. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they put me in sleeping hold. And, like, they put me in sleeping hold with the arrows and shit. Like, I lived through the... Sh Crap. You're, you're all over the board here, number one. You're saying bows and arrows, you're saying revolvers, and you're saying some other thing, and they, you're saying they shot you in the eye, okay? They shot you with a revolver in your eye. Yes. And that's Is it. it a BB gun? 
No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a revolver. They shot you in the eye with a revolver. You wouldn't be talking to me right now. It was most likely you'd be dead. That's what I thought too, man. I really don't know. I really don't know, and I just want to go back to sleep and try to go back to bed. You're not going back to bed, okay? That's not going to happen. What happened to Heather? Heather got shot. Where did she get shot? Inside the face once. She got shot inside of the face? Mm-hmm. How close were you to her when she got shot in the face? It was after I got shot, so I didn't even hear anything. So you got shot first? Mm-hmm. And what happened? Did you call 911? Mm-hmm. Did you see if she was alive? She was sleeping still, and that's it. I just let her sleep. She got shot in the side of the face, and you let her sleep? Yeah, that's... This does not make sense, Ryan. I know I didn't mean to, man. I'm sorry. I didn't know if she was passing out. That's because I got shot wrong once, too, and I was going to pass out. Okay, this is now, not before. You're saying right now you've been shot? Yes. In the eye? Yes. With the revolver? Yes. All right. Ryan, you need to start telling me the truth because your story doesn't make sense. I'm trying, man. I don't know. What happened with you and Heather last night? I did it for and shot the house. And shot her. Mm hmm. Her dad shot her. Mm hmm. Alright. And then leaves. Mm hmm. And what did you do? I tried to go back to sleep. After you've been shot? Mm hmm. In the eye. Mm hmm. You didn't know. This nigga's retarded, though. Nigga said he got shot in the eye and tried to go to sleep. What the fuck, nigga? What? <laughs> Yo, what? Nah, yo, you got... Now the fuck you get shot in the face and say, I want to take a nap. <laughs> Bitch, you better stay up. Bitch, you better stay up. Nigga trying to fight that shit. Nigga like, stay up. Well, I... Well, I... That yeah. nigga said, nah, nigga. I'm trying to go to bed, nigga. <laughs> that was crazy, bro. Nah, that nigga's dusted. He definitely needs some milk. That nigga's mad, bro. I never heard no shit. I never heard no shit like that, bro. Nigga trying to stay up with, with some trauma shit happen to you. You gotta stay up. This nigga said he went to sleep. He said I'm trying to go to sleep, man. I'm trying to die. Come on, I'm trying to die right now. I couldn't do nothing. Nigga, go to the hospital, nigga. The fucking he couldn't do nothing. Go get some help, nigga. Nigga said he couldn't do nothing. Get some help, nigga. Don't go to sleep. Niggas, I'm ready to go to bed, nigga. That nigga crazy. I'm gonna have to call 911. Mm-mm. Ryan, look at me. Ryan. Yes. I don't know, man. I really don't know. How did you shoot Heather? Worse, worse, Ryan. I didn't shoot Heather. She was already shot once by her brother, I swear. Richie. Yes. Richie you shot his own sister. Yes, I swear. That's it. So that hurt me. So you've been shot in the eyes. Yes. Put your, put, your legs, put your legs down. Put your legs down. Put your legs down. Put your legs down. That nigga trying to go out, bro. He trying to lay down. He trying to put his feet up, bro. He trying to, that nigga said, I put my feet up. That nigga said, put your legs down, man. This nigga said, bro, I'm ready to go. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Look at him. Oh, my head hurts. Don't touch his head like that. He killing him. The cop is killing him. Look how he's grabbing his head. Bro, it's the cop. The cop killed him. Bro, the cop told these niggas dirty, bro. He told you he got shot and you're not even trying to help him. Even if he's, even if he got, bro, that nigga look like something is wrong with his face. He tell you he got shot in his eye. You said a BB gun. Even if he got shot with a BB gun, you should be trying to get this nigga some help. That's crazy. You feel me? This is mad. Okay. Finally, the detective at least considers the fact that Ryan might be in some form of physical distress. He leaves the room to ask for an ambulance and returns momentarily to try and get a few more details about the shooting. Ryan clarifies that Heather isn't related to Richie or his dad, and that he's got no idea why they attacked him that evening. Ten minutes later, the fire department arrives to take a look at Ryan's injury. And he's acting uh, like he has a serious head injury, which would make sense. But you have him from Ryan. Yeah, we'll take him. I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, Don Hall, has it been like that before or just happened tonight? I think just for like a day or so. I wonder what happened what, the other night. I don't know. You don't know what happened. It's Were there guns around? This kid Eric did it. I don't know how he did it exactly. He might have been shot. I don't know. Ryan gets his blood pressure taken and finally after 56 minutes of unnecessary and ultimately deadly interrogation, he is taken to the hospital. Upon inspection at the hospital, doctors immediately realized his status was critical and that he also had indeed been shot in the eye. They also told his father that he'd contracted an infection that could have been prevented had he received proper care. Ryan stayed at the hospital for 35 days and lost part of his brain and his left die. Worst of all though, he experienced regular seizures from the day he left the hospital until 2016 when one finally took his life. Richie and Larry were both given life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ryan's father also Wait, hold on. They kill him? No, he died from until 2016 when one finally took his life. Richie and Larry were both given life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ryan's father also Richie and Larry. <laughs> That's it's nutty. It's a mad thing, bro. That's crazy. They killed her the ass too. Given life in prison without double homie. Out the possibility of That's parole. Ryan's part. father also sued the police department. Yeah. But as is so often the case, he only received a fraction of the punishment. Less than three years. Oh, we gotta do three years for that. That's yeah. good though. Touched him, nigga. Yeah, that's good. You prison. Many people believe this officer should be charged with assault and possibly even murder, and that three years is absolutely not enough, especially compared to cases like Reed Durant, who's facing up to 30 years in prison after attacking a cop. Reed was arrested at an elementary school after he was seen pretending to be the father of a kindergartner. Reed was seen to be acting strangely around the kids and failed to correctly name any of the children there, so he was arrested and taken to the police station. In the interrogation, Reed freely told officers that he intended to lure one of the children out, feed them candy laced with tranquilizers, then abduct them while they were unconscious. But after what seemed, this is me off. seemed like an easy interrogation, Reed suddenly decided that the detective had heard enough and made a bid for his escape. Escape. Put your hands behind your back now. Put your hands behind your back now. That's a mad thing. That was a black nigga. He'd have been putting all kind of hands and feet on that nigga. That nigga just turned him around and put him in cuffs. If that was me, nigga, they would have beat my ass, bro. <laughs> I'd have beat that nigga up one on one. He'd have had to pop my black ass in there. But I'm fucking him up on the one on one. You kidding me right now? Reed had picked up a pen and attempted to stab Man, the officer with. Niggas would have shot a nigga ass in there. A nigga ass would have got shot in there. Ah, nigga, fuck yeah, is you doing? Would've got shot. Nigga would have got <laughs> shot in there. <laughs> It, but the officer's reflexes and composure helps him to instantly take him down and restrain him. That ends the fact that the pen isn't the most effective weapon. Either way, Reed was arrested and charged with attempted kidnapping and now a felony count of assault. He's currently awaiting trial and facing up to 30 years in prison. Reed's escape obviously didn't end very well for him. But the story is different for Quantrell Schwartzlow, who managed to escape the cops faster than anyone in history. Quantrell was brought in for strangling a girl and assaulting her, a crime he clearly didn't want to be convicted of. She probably asked for it. No, I'm just not. Come here, let me show you. He said, I'll be back in three minutes. He made too much noise. He out! He out! He out! Oh, no! You saw how this shit pop back in when he came in? Look at this shit, this shit. Look, look, look. Oh, no! Unfortunately for Quantrell, his handcuffs were a dead giveaway, and he was captured four hours later. 
While it's unknown exactly what happens to Quantrill after, this clip will forever put him in the Interrogation Hall of Fame. However, Ricky Hawthorne took a much more straightforward approach to ending his interrogation, managing to confess in record time. Ricky was found covered in blood near the bodies of Lara Kuchar and Tommy Skeens. Lara had clearly been assaulted. Ricky's DNA was also found at the scene, so police had no worries when bringing him in. Surprisingly though, Ricky would make it even easier for them. You know what, let's do this. I did, but I think somebody came behind me and finished. Yeah, I did. So much for staying silent. <laughs> listen, man, listen, man, listen. I ain't got time for all this bullshit, man. I did it. Listen, I did it. Somebody probably gave me this emotion after me. But I did it. I killed them. I initially killed them. Somebody probably came and kicked them after me or something. I don't know. But I did it. So listen, we ain't got to do all this. <laughs> Send me to jail. <laughs> now, just get it over with. Like yes, he thought nah. about it. He said, I ain't gonna lie. He thought about it. Yes. He's like, yo, these things is about to frog me. Like, let's say, I did it, nigga. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> However, Ricky is alleging that he wasn't actually the murderer. He just attacked the couple and assaulted Laura. It was someone else that finished the job. Even though the evidence was stacked against him, he still would have had a better chance of getting away with it if he just stayed silent. There's three more people. I don't know. And you know what? They was living when I left. But I think somebody came in there behind me and finished them off. I did beat the shit out of them. Hurry up. I left. Exactly. Despite his claims, it was ah! determined that the couple died of the injuries inflicted by Ricky, and he was later found guilty of the first and second degree murder, as well as the attack on Laura. But nothing could prepare police for the interrogations of these two evil teen killers, suspected of murdering their best friend for nothing more than their own joy. I just killed Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a f***ing joke. Oh, these two 16-year-olds are currently suspected of stabbing classmate Cassie Stoddard over 30 times in one of the most horrifying murders in history. But what they don't realize is that in the next couple hours, police are going to dismantle every part of their story in front of their own eyes, resulting in one of the most satisfying and intense... They got, yo, you know it's crazy, because they're not even supposed to be able to question these little niggas, they're 16. No, matter of fact, yes, you could. 16, you can't. You it's like interrogations of all time, where these teens will soon realize their actions have consequences. At 11.02 p.m., 16-year-old Cassie had been left home alone to take care of her aunt's house while she was away. That night, she invited over three people, her boyfriend, Matt, and... Oh, she was trying to get trained. <laughs> Yeah, Yo. she was trying to get trained. Your chat sauce is wild. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't posted this on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna start recording this shit now.